Hi everyone, I'm Zineb working on the Advanced Analytics and Intune Data team and um, I'm here with Abby and we're very excited to talk to you today a little bit more about our latest release and Abby? Hi, I'm Abby Starr. I'm a product manager on the data platform and advanced analytics team along with Zineb. So we'll talk a little bit more today about our latest releases on the data platform and advanced analytics into your hardware adventure is the top. And then we'll talk about how that experience looks like with Resource Explorer. And then Abby will lead us on the journey for a multi-device query, the tips and recommendations we have, and then any upcoming investments that we have in our space. So going to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about the high level overview of what device inventory and Resource Explorer are today. So we are bringing you basically more data and access to information on your devices on demand. Um, you're able to select entities from a properties catalog and you get more visibility into that data per device. I'll talk a little bit more about how you can set that up, how that experience looks like. We are looking to grow the list of available entities and working on a custom attributes feature where admins will be able to customize what data they want to see on their devices. Today, this experience is only for Windows devices, but we're looking to expand this for a cross-platform experience. And so going to the next slide, I want to talk a little bit more about what the difference is between device inventory and resource explorer and how the two work together. So device inventory is basically we enable you to collect all that data. We are able to provide you with entities and you can select some of those. It's a broader set of data regarding device compliance, config policies, security status. And the great thing about it is you are also getting that data within 24 hours in the Resource Explorer experience. So with Resource Explorer, you can get on-demand data on the properties that you've collected, and we'll take a look on how that looks like on the demo. So I will navigate here to the configuration blade under devices. I'd like to create a new policy, and so I will target Windows as a platform, and I'll choose the property catalog profile. And so you might be familiar with this flow if you created policies before on Intune. You'll be able to create a name for this profile, and then you'll be able to access the properties catalog. Um, we have a set of required properties that comes in, things like CPU, battery, um, OS version, as you're choosing the properties. And so you're always welcome to go ahead and remove the categories and make changes. Um, the next step for you will be to choose the scope tags and then assignments. So you can target all your devices with this property data collection, or you can target some of those groups. And then you can review and create this policy. As I mentioned, again, we focus on the data freshness. So within 24 hours or less, you should be able to get you know, your data directly on Resource Explorer. Here I'm picking a new Windows device. I'd like to understand more the data on that device. Um, you can see the Resource Explorer blade under the device, and then you'll be able to see on the left all the list of properties. And so this is a great tool for you to get quick on-demand information and data about your single device, but also it is a great tool for troubleshooting if you'd like to understand how your battery is performing and see if the device should go up for a refresh, or if you'd like to understand data on TPM and see if it's enabled. Again, we are always looking to grow this list of entities. We will take your feedback and question on this experience. Um, today, Resource Explorer is part of our Intune license, so it's available for all Intune customers. We're building this data and giving you, again, access to all this data as a prerequisite for complex querying capabilities that come in our premium add-ons as of advanced analytics. And so I'll hand it over to Abby so she can talk a little bit more about the multi-device ex experience. Thanks, Neb. Multi-device query allows you to query across your entire fleet of devices using the device inventory information collected in enhanced device inventory earlier. There's a KQL interface where you can type out Custo language queries and there's support for joins, aggregations, functions, many of the same things you see in Custo today. The initial release will be for Windows, but we imagine this being a cross-platform feature and cross-platform support is soon to follow our initial release. 
Uh, also soon after the initial release is NL to KQL support for our customers who want to use the feature but aren't necessarily Kusto experts. And there will be more on that in the demo. If this looks pretty similar to SECM's CM pivot or a single device query, that's because it is. This was intentional. So now I'm going to go over some comparisons and contrasts between single device query and multi device query because they can get kind of confusing. They're both named device query in the console. So in single device query, the access point is on the individual device page versus on multi device query. You'll see the entry point a little bit under all devices on the devices blade. And on single device query, you're getting real time data. So we're calling up the device physically and saying, do you have any information? And because of the data will be so fresh, we can provide access to data that would be volatile. So things that might be stale by the time that we've collected it on device inventory. We also have access to some sensitive info. So things that have enough privacy and security concerns that you probably wouldn't want us to store it even if we could. And single device query released in 2024. So it's been around for a little bit. In contrast, multi-device query is using cache data because it's using the device inventory data that's harvested from that policy. And because you've created the policy, you're in full control of what is or is not collected there. So now let's go to a demo of multi-device query. Here, the admin is going into the device query access point, and they want to know all of the OS versions on their tenant. From our window, they're typing out a Custo query, just showing them all of their OS versions. And that left-hand side there shows all of the properties that can be collected. Um, you can see in the tree view, it expands it contracts. But in the future, we're going to provide auto population support for that. And there's more on that later. So the admin runs the query here and they'll get the results in that bottom half of the screen there. And what is displayed is basically everything that the admin can grab about OS versions. And in the second example here, the admin doesn't necessarily know how to query using KQL. So they're using NL to KQL with Copilot to help them out. Um, the scenario will be pretty similar. It's just instead of showing all of the OS versions on the tenant, they're showing all devices with a particular OS version. So the admin puts in their prompt. Copilot will generate a KQL query that you can choose to add to your query window, or you could just run it straight from the Copilot window. And then the admin gets an answer to their query without having to know any KQL themselves. Let's quickly go over the high level flow of what happens when you submit a query. So the admin is on the Intune MDQ editor. Uh, when they submit a query that makes a call to our graph APIs, which are internal only, there will be more on that later. That goes to the pivot service. Pivot was our previous name for multi-device query. A multi-device query then talks to AQS, which is our backend for multi-device query. AQS takes the query and puts it into a format that the inventory service would understand. It goes and calls up inventory and says, do you have any information for me? Inventory provides the information. AQS then translate it back into something that answers the query that was originally given by MDQ. And then MDQ gives it back to the Intune portal on the web in a format that the UX can easily read. The device linked entity is a particular entity specific to MDQ that we think is worth mentioning because it's got some special use cases. It functions as the unique identifier for all resulting rows. So when you submit a query and you get a result, the device linked entity shows up as the first column on the left of all of your results, unless you've specifically written your query to get it to not show. And it's basically the same thing as an implicit join. We join the device entity for you on every query that you make so that you have that unique identifier for the future. If you use it in shorthand, it'll resolve to device that device ID. So you can see in this example, the device entity is embedded under every single other entity. So it's basically auto joined for you when the admin runs this query, BIOS info take five. 
Um, they can use properties within the device entity without having to do a manual join. And when the query is run, the device entity shows up as the first column on the left side, unless the admin specifically writes in their query that they don't want it to show up. Here in this example, the admin has specifically written the query so that the device column does not show, but when you use the device in shorthand in your query, so here when device contains 968, um, device resolves the device dot device ID, not device dot device name. So it's checking whether the device ID contains 968 instead of whether the device name contains 968. Now let's go over some tips, recommendations, error cases, and limitations around multi-device query. So as we mentioned before, there's a prerequisite that you've set up enhanced device inventory. You've created a policy and assigned it to some devices. And you'll also need licensing for either Intune Suite or the Advanced Analytics Standalone SKU. You'll also need the Managed Devices Query permission. This is a specifically built permission for SDQ and MDQ. So if you've used SDQ, you probably already have this permission. We're using the same supported operators, functions, etc., from single device query. So you should see some familiarity there. And devices supported will include any device running Windows 10 or later, and the device must be corporate owned. The device can be managed either by Intune or it can be co-managed. In addition, a big key here is that there will not be graph API support in the near future. So there's not an endpoint for you to call to be able to interact with any of this data outside of the console as of right now. And data is refreshed at different rates per entity, as opposed to being refreshed at each individual device level. And we're working on providing queryable data freshness so that you can easily see which entities have refreshed at which time. There's no support for any join types besides inner unique upon release. And we're working on adding that after release. And if you try to join on anything other than inner unique as a type, it will be ignored. We do support the on syntax for join statements. If you join with either device.deviceID or device, which is shorthand for device.deviceID. Some error cases here. The max query timeout is four minutes. On SDQ, this is 20 minutes. So it's a significant reduction before you know for a fact that your query didn't run. And you're limited to three join operators per query. You're limited to 10 query submissions per minute and 500,000 rows per query. In the 10 query submissions per minute scenario, you'll get an error case back in the UX, but in the 500,000 rows per query case, you will not get an error code back in the first release. This will come in subsequent releases. Here is a list of sample queries that we've put together. We're working on adding this into the console as clickable cards. So if you were in the console, you'd be able to access all of these sample queries and clicking on them would populate in the query window, but we haven't gotten there yet. So just to start you off, here's some of the most common queries that we've seen in our customer testing. Finally, we'll go over our roadmap for the future for device inventory and for MDQ. For MDQ, Timestamps is a big one we're working on. So like I've said previously, being able to see information based off of how fresh the data is on an entity level, as opposed to the last seen date time on the device, which is the most obvious way to see data freshness now. Sample queries appearing on the page. I mentioned this earlier. This is when you can click on a card and some of those sample queries that you saw earlier automatically populate in the console. We're also working on the ability to double click on a property on the left hand side to populate it in the query window and to take actions from device query, like a rename or log collection in bulk. We're also working on more properties and entities added to enhanced device inventory. This is something we're working on every quarter and our ability to query entities gets larger each quarter. This is going to be a cross-platform feature, so support for non-Windows platforms is coming soon. And further along in our roadmap are things like exporting the data into either CSV or another usable format, taking the action to deploy a remediation script on particular devices as a result of a query, 
app inventory querying instead of just device inventory querying and being able to define custom inventory variables for your inventory policies. And that's all we have for you today. Thank you everyone for listening and we're excited to see the features roll out into Intune. Yeah, thanks everyone and looking forward to feedback and questions.